And that was the case today concerning Mount Rainier. The threat includes Mount Rainier, which scientists continually monitor for activity. All right, before we go tonight, we wanted to leave you with this. The world's tallest national geyser erupted again recently. On Monday, the steamboat geyser erupted for the 19th time this year. Yellowstone National Park released the amazing video showing the sights and sounds of the event. What if I told you the most dangerous volcano in America isn't Yellowstone, but a snow-capped giant quietly waking up near Seattle? In April 2025, something terrifying began deep beneath Mount Rainier. One of the main hazards at Rainier, it's less explosive, but it has a lot of glaciers on top of it. First came the quakes, then the heat, then the signal. It started as a pulse, a low rhythmic vibration with no source, echoing across the entire West Coast. Scientists were baffled. Seismic networks lit up. Satellite data showed the mountain's southern flank rising. Gas levels spiked. Emergency phones rang in the dead of night. And finally, the USGS issued a red alert. What's really happening under Mount Rainier? Could this trigger the next mega eruption? Or even worse, a volcanic chain reaction from Washington to California. In this video, we uncover the shocking discoveries geologists are making in real time. Explore the growing fear of a hidden magma dome. Less than 70 miles from Seattle is Mount Rainier. It's totally at a state of background activity. And reveal how this could be the most dangerous seismic warning the U.S. has faced in decades. Mount Rainier, the sleeping giant awakens. What if the mountain that defines Seattle's skyline is hiding a deadly secret? one that could rewrite history in minutes. At 14,410 feet, Mount Rainier is more than just breathtaking scenery. It's a glacier-wrapped supervolcano sitting on a hair trigger. Just 60 miles from over 4 million residents, it hides a volatile network of magma tunnels and seismic fractures capable of unleashing one of the worst natural disasters in American history. In April 2025, the whispers of danger became a scream. A swarm of deep earthquakes rattled the southern flank, first tens, then hundreds, each one a warning shot. Then came the low-frequency rumbles, tremors typically caused by magma forcing its way upward. Thermal satellites picked up hot spots glowing beneath the summit. Gas detectors lit up with dangerous spikes in sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. But most chilling? The mountain's southern side was physically rising. Could this be harmless venting or a fuse being lit beneath America's most underestimated threat? Glaciers began melting faster than ever. Crystal clear streams turned cloudy and sour smelling. Deep down, the earth was moving, pressurizing like a ticking bomb. Mount Rainier wasn't just shifting, it was waking up, and the question gripping every scientist, every emergency planner, every family in the valley below, is this. Are we witnessing the first signs of a mega eruption? Or is this the calm before the real storm? A strange signal no one can explain. In the middle of all the seismic data, gas readings, and thermal maps, one signal stood out a deep, rhythmic vibration picked up by multiple seismic stations stretching from Mount Rainier to Northern California. The wave had no clear epicenter. It wasn't tied to any quake, explosion, or aftershock. And yet, it pulsed. Researchers dubbed it the echo. It repeats every 11 hours, travels too slowly for a typical quake, and appears to originate from deep beneath the Earth's crust. Some speculate it's a harmonic tremor, unlike anything previously recorded. Others think it might be a resonance caused by the shifting of the mantle itself. The frequency is low, below the threshold of human hearing, and the waveform is eerily consistent, as if the Earth itself is breathing through stone. Attempts to triangulate the origin of the echo have produced strange results. Some data suggests it's centered beneath Mount Rainier. Others point farther south, near the Gorda Ridge off the Oregon coast, an area known for unusual plate movements and seafloor spreading. There's even speculation that the signal isn't coming from one point at all, but is being reflected, amplified, 
through a mysterious subterranean structure, possibly a magma reservoir unlike any we've mapped before. And then there's the pattern. Every 11 hours, not 10.8, not 11.2, exactly 11. What natural process on Earth could operate with such uncanny precision? Tidal forces, planetary resonance, or is it a geological clock ticking down to something we can't yet predict? Theories grow more bizarre with each passing day. Some researchers wonder if we're detecting the rise and fall of a massive superheated gas bubble trapped miles below. Others believe it could be the vibration of a colossal, unstable fault interface under mounting pressure. A few even raise the possibility that we're witnessing a resonance effect tied to the Earth's core dynamics, an interaction between deep mantle plumes and lithospheric stress field. But here's the unsettling part. Similar signals were once recorded before the 2011 eruption of Nabro Volcano in Eritrea and dismissed until it was too late. There too, a rhythmic tremor was dismissed as noise until magma breached the surface and ash darkened the skies. Is the echo a precursor to something vast and unprecedented? Could it be the Earth's warning, spoken in frequencies we're only just beginning to understand? And if we are finally listening, what happens when the signal stops? Shock waves along the West Coast. The Rainier quake swarm didn't stay confined. Within days, Sensors across Oregon and Northern California began registering tremors. Mount Hood rumbled with subtle quakes. Mount Shasta trembled with newfound seismic unrest. And even long dormant Mount Lassen began to show signs of awakening. What was once a contained disturbance had transformed into a multi-state event. But the most alarming signals came from farther south. Seismic arrays near the Southern San Andreas Fault began picking up harmonic tremors, distinct, low-frequency vibrations often linked to underground fluid migration or the pressurization of magma chambers. These weren't just random jitters. They bore the spectral signature of subterranean movement on a grand scale. Could the unrest at Rainier be propagating through the West Coast's fault lines like a chain reaction? Was it disturbing the equilibrium of the entire Cascadia subduction zone? These were no longer fringe questions. These were urgent possibilities raised in emergency meetings by top geophysicists. Some experts believe that Rainier's activity could act as a stress trigger, nudging other segments of the tectonic puzzle closer to rupture. The Cascadia Zone, which stretches from Northern California to British Columbia, is already under immense geological strain. One push, one tremor too many could theoretically tip the balance. Could it happen today, tomorrow, or is this simply foreshadowing the next big one? Adding to the anxiety was the timing. Swarms of quakes began occurring not just randomly, but in a discernible wave pattern, pulsing north to south. Was this an echo through the Earth's crust or a warning bell sounding in slow motion? In a matter of weeks, what started as local unrest at Mount Rainier escalated into a regional seismic mystery. The West Coast, home to over 50 million people, was suddenly under a shadow of geological suspense. How far will the shockwaves travel? And when will the next jolt come? What INSAR revealed? Using INSAR, a satellite radar technology that measures even the smallest shifts in the Earth's surface, scientists detected a troubling anomaly, clear uplift on Mount Rainier's southern flank. In just 14 days, the ground had risen more than three centimeters. That may not sound like much, but in geological term, it's equivalent to a scream beneath the crust. That kind of uplift isn't the result of erosion, snowmelt, or seasonal shifts. This is magma on the move. The Earth's crust is ballooning outward, pushed by molten rock creeping closer to the surface. It's a slow, silent pressure cooker and the question isn't if it will blow, but when. INSAR didn't just show vertical movement. It revealed subtle warping of the terrain near the Carbon River Valley, a corridor known as a Lahar Path. Why does that matter? Because if magma-induced heat destabilizes Rainier's thick glaciers, it could unleash catastrophic mud flows, 
capable of swallowing entire towns downstream. Imagine a wall of debris, ice, rock, and water hurtling at 60 miles per hour, unstoppable, unrelenting. Would residents have time to flee? Would the warning system sound in time? Thermal imagery reinforced the fear. Unusual heat signatures appeared in areas previously considered geothermally stable. Chemical analyses showed spikes in carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide levels, gases often released just before magma breaches new pathways. And then came something new, minor steam emissions spotted along fractured zones at the summit rim, not conclusive, but deeply concerning. Meanwhile, deep earth seismic stations began picking up long period earthquakes. Those low rumbling signals linked to underground fluid movement. These quakes don't crack the earth like traditional tectonic tremors. They pulse through it, often foretelling changes deep in the magmatic plumbing system. But perhaps the most telling signal of all, a subtle radial expansion. Rainier wasn't just rising, it was bulging outward. AI-driven models flagged this as a strong correlation with patterns observed in eruptions of Mount Pinatubo and Mount Redoubt. Then came the acoustic anomalies, ultrasonic bursts like distant explosions underground. Scientists believe this could be fracturing rock, a magma chamber exerting too much pressure against its prison. One volcanologist described it this way. We're watching a pressure balloon form under one of the most dangerous volcanoes on the continent, and it's expanding faster than we've ever recorded. What's most disturbing is the convergence of all these signs. On their own, they might be explainable. Together, they paint a picture of a mountain preparing to erupt. So the real question is no longer if Mount Rainier will erupt. The question now is, how much time do we have left? Earth's mysterious pulse is a hidden force about to detonate. In the heart of the Pacific Northwest, something strange is stirring, not just beneath Mount Rainier, but beneath the entire Cascadian arc. Scientists monitoring deep Earth tremors noticed a low frequency, rhythmic vibration that defied explanation. It wasn't tied to any known quake, explosion, or tectonic activity, and yet it pulsed. The signal repeats every 11 hours, not randomly, not approximately, exactly as if Earth itself is ticking. Dubbed the echo, this deep seismic hum was picked up from multiple points across the West Coast, but attempts to triangulate it returned conflicting data. Some readings suggest it originates beneath Mount Rainier. Others point to offshore anomalies near the Gorda Ridge. A few data models suggest it's not originating at all, but being reflected, like sonar, bouncing through a hollowed cavern of pressure. Is it a magma chamber shifting, a new fracture forming, or something entirely unknown? USGS issues a rare red alert. On May 4, 2025, the USGS raised Mount Rainier's alert level to red, the highest possible classification in its four-tier volcanic warning system. This was not a drill. This was a historic decision. A red alert means a major eruption is imminent or already underway with significant danger to life, property, and infrastructure. It's a signal for emergency response agencies to move immediately, for evacuation plans to activate, and for millions to brace for the worst. Within hours, emergency operations centers across Washington State roared to life. Sirens blared across the Puyallup Valley. Alerts buzzed on phones. The National Guard was deployed to assist with route clearance, medical staging, and air reconnaissance. The media went into overdrive. Is this the next St. Helens? One headline screamed. Rainier's wrath awakens, said another. But behind the headlines was a truth far more unsettling. Mount Rainier is a different kind of beast. Unlike Mount St. Helens, which erupted sideways and violently, Rainier's threat is colder and faster. Lahars. If magma breaches the summit, it could unleash a wall of ice, water, and rock down populated valleys within minutes. Scientists estimate that over 150,000 people live in zones vulnerable to such flows. Entire highways, schools, and hospitals sit squarely in the danger zone. Could this be a false alarm? Or is this our last warning before the mountain speaks? The earth has raised its voice 
the USGS has answered. Now the world waits. The Cascade Chain Reaction What if Mount Rainier is just the beginning? In the days following the Red Alert, tremors weren't confined to just one volcano. Mount St. Helens, famous for its 1980 eruption, began releasing bursts of sulfurous gas. Its crater, dormant for years, started to register quakes at increasing depth. At the same time, Mount Baker began to emit minor plumes of steam. Then came seismic murmurs from Glacier Peak and the Three Sisters Range in Oregon. To the casual eye, it looked like isolated activity. But to geologists, this was something far more alarming, a domino effect. Add to that the fact that some seismic signals from Mount Hood and Crater Lake resemble early pre-eruption tremor profiles. Now the question scientists are asking isn't just what will Rainier do, but who's next? Could we be on the edge of a new eruptive phase for the entire Cascade Range? A geologic reset, thousands of years in the making. And if one eruption triggers another, could the West Coast handle the shockwave of back-to-back -back disasters? This may not be a one mountain crisis. It could be a region-wide awakening. What if Mount Rainier erupts? It's the question no one wants to ask, but now no one can ignore. What happens if Rainier actually erupts? Most people imagine a towering ash cloud or maybe a lava flow slowly crawling down a forested slope, but Rainier plays by different rules. Its real threat isn't fire, it's ice. Rainier is draped in more than 25 glaciers. If even a portion of those melt during an eruption, it could unleash a cataclysm unlike anything seen in modern American history, a lahar, a churning, cement-thick river of mud, rock, and melted ice. And it wouldn't trickle, it would roar. Imagine a wall of destruction moving 60 miles per hour, flattening forests, burying roads, and swallowing entire towns in its path. Now imagine trying to outrun it. Places like Ording, Puyallup, and Enumclaw are squarely in the Lahar's path. In the worst case scenario, they'd have less than 40 minutes to evacuate. The Electron Mudflow, Rainier's last major Lahar, buried parts of the Puyallup Valley nearly 600 years ago. Back then, there were no highways, no suburbs, no airports. Today, everything's in its path. Scientists say, this isn't about fear. It's about math, probability, and preparation. So if Rainier erupts, the question won't be if lives are lost or systems collapse. It will be how many, how fast, and how far will the destruction reach? Are we ready? The alarms have sounded. The mountain has moved. The data is pouring in. But when it comes to human readiness, the cracks are already showing. The red alert didn't just expose the volcano's instability, it exposed ours. In towns like Orting and Puyallup, sirens failed their tests. Some didn't go off at all. Others couldn't be heard over highway traffic or everyday noise. In Enumclaw, evacuation route signs were missing. In certain rural zones, entire neighborhoods had no designated safe zones. Parents didn't know if schools had lahar drills. Some schools didn't, and the clock is ticking. Meanwhile, misinformation is spreading online. Conspiracy theories, false alerts, fake evacuation orders, confusion spreads faster than lava. And still, Mount Rainier pulses beneath its icy crown. Experts say the next 30 days could be critical. Volcanologists are watching the magma chamber. Seismologists are modeling potential quake bursts and civil defense planners are reviewing nightmare scenarios. What if it erupts at night? What if a heavy rainstorm triggers a lahar, even without an eruption? What if the next signal we hear isn't from a satellite, but from the mountain itself? Rainier doesn't care about schedules or politics or red tape. When it moves, it moves fast, and we're already behind. 